Project RoboGobi, A Vision in Science, by Liam Wade, Nick Nelsonwood, Joseph Bieberstein, and Travis Lipsack. Our idea was to have an innovative project, a ROV, that was cheaper, better, and easily portable by one person that allowed feedback from multiple sensors through a wireless stream. Okay, choosing our brains. So the first step of our project over the summer was to choose how we were going to control our robot. Um, we had three options, three different boards that we could use to control the ROV. Uh, the three options were Arduino, a Beagle, the Beagle Bone, and the Raspberry Pi. Um, we ended up choosing the Raspberry Pi uh, because of the extensive documentation online um, and the fact that um, a lot of people that were new to um, new to building robots used the Raspberry Pi to build like a tank robot or a quick um, RC car or something like that. It was really helpful. Um, so the Raspberry Pi is what we chose to use. So since we were new to the Raspberry Pi itself, uh, the first step we used on the kind of software hardware integration side was to uh, learn how to set it up. So to do that, we imaged it. Uh, we put an operating system on an SD card uh, and we downloaded VNC Viewer, which is a piece of software that allows us to view the Raspberry Pi desktop remotely from another computer as the Pi itself does not have a monitor. Also, since we are writing our software for this ROV in Java. We had to download the uh, Java SDK onto uh, the Raspberry Pi image as well. Uh, then we uh, began to experiment with uh, cameras uh, that we could use as our view window for the robot itself. Uh, we decided to use a USB webcam. Uh, there is a Pi uh, video module itself that is meant for the Pi, but it is not versatile enough and it doesn't have enough documentation. So we settled on a USB webcam uh, and we experimented with several different softwares uh, to facilitate our viewing. Uh, the first one we tried was OpenCV, that's a computer visualization, visualization software. Uh, then we tried Motion, uh, FFmpeg, uh, both other visualization softwares, ROS, which is a robot operating system, uh, which was a little software intensive, and finally settled on MJPEG Streamer, uh, which has a very good latency, only about one second between the two systems. Okay, the next thing we did over this past summer was work on the Raspberry Pi motor controller. Um, and basically, we wanted to use the Raspberry Pi itself uh, to control motors um, through uh, like a data transfer. So basically uh, we downloaded a software called Pi Blaster um, and this allows the user to send uh, different PWM signals, pulse width modulation signals through the general purpose input output pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and this is a one wire connection meaning that we can have uh, the 5 volt power, the 3.3 or the 3 .3 volt power, the ground, um, and then the data wire and the pulses are sent through the data wire um, as duty cycles and over on the left hand side of the screen you can see that duty cycles um, are basically the amount that the pulses are on or off uh, which uh, regulates the speed so 10% duty cycle would be like 10% on for the motor, 10% speed. Um, so that was another big step in our project. Um, we also worked on the inertial measurement unit uh, which is called an IMU. It's basically an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer all together in one package. And this um, sensor has nine degrees of freedom and it basically allows us to visualize how the ROV is going to be in the water. Um, so if you look on the right hand side of the screen there's a 3D model of the IMU which is on the left. So it's a board right now and you can see that there's an arrow on it and you can basically turn the board and you can get the arrow pointing wherever the, um, the front of the board is. And we want to be able to uh, convert that image into something, into uh, a SOLIDWORKS image that looks like our ROV and put that on uh, the GUI so the user is going to be able to have a um, kind of an outside, a third person uh, view of what the submersible looks like when you're underwater. Because when you have a just uh, a camera view um, through the eyes of the robot, it's not going to really be helpful to see how you're oriented 
Um, and by having this capability, it'll increase uh, user friendliness. Uh, we also want to be able to station keep with this. So basically, we'd set it on the bottom, press a key that says station keep, and then um, when the inertial measurement unit senses a certain degree of change, uh, the motors would turn on and correct itself. So that's another cool capability. Uh, another piece of the software was Arduino sensors. Um, on top of the Raspberry Pi as our main board, we also use an Arduino uh, to gather input directly from sensors. We talked to both the Gulf of Maine Research Institute and Bigelow Labs and Booth Bay and found out that the most important things to find out about an underwater ecosystem is the temperature, depth, salinity, and pH of the water as well as how much oxygen is dissolved in the water and the amount of light that you're gaining um, or that you can see in the water at certain depths. Um, then we're also going to be using cameras and a GPS device so that we can know where we are. Okay, so putting it all together. Um, after we got all these uh, separate pieces uh, complete or partially complete, um, obviously, or right now we don't have um, all the sensors complete and we don't have the coding for the IMU complete. Um, but basically what, what we want to be able to do and what we've partially done already is um, connect all of these different capabilities to the Raspberry Pi and be able to stream that through the one device or multiple, like for an example we'd have one for motor control and one for um, cameras uh, just so it lessens the load. But we'd stream everything through one or two devices um, up to the surface which would then connect directly to your uh, user interface which you can control from. Um, and to do a lot of the data transfer, we're going to be using socket servers. Um, they're pretty uh, basic Java programs. Uh, and basically, you run one on the Raspberry Pi, and it opens up a certain port. And then you run one on your laptop, and you can connect wirelessly to, um, through a certain door on the Raspberry Pi. And the server will output like temperature readings or um, be able to receive uh, motor controller inputs. Um, so that's how we're going to be uh, transferring data. Um, and obviously we want to all have it displayed on a friendly GUI that is coded in Java. We also worked uh, pretty extensively on the mechanical side of the robot over the summer. Um, we tested a bunch of motors and propellers, specifically four motors, um, which were mostly bilge pump motors. And we tested them with ten different props ranging from 38 to 70 millimeters and having either two or three blades. Um, we tested these in a testing tank, which took us a couple tries to perfect. But basically we took an old fish tank and added a wooden frame and some additional hardware to be able to read voltage, amperage, and force. Um, here's a picture of the testing tank and off to the right you can see the force sensor. Um, and then in the center of the picture obviously is the wooden frame around a fish tank with um, a container inside holding our motor. Um, and then on the left, the silver box is the motor controller. The data, as I've mentioned, we were measuring voltage, amperage, and force in newtons. Um, from these, we created graphs so that we could see which propellers worked best with, with motors and which motors took the least amount of amperage, meaning that batteries would be able to last longer um, powering them. Um, most of our propellers we used were plastic propellers. We did look into metal propellers, but they're a lot more expensive and they're also heavier, which could be a negative. So we decided to test with plastic props, and then once we had chosen our favorites, get those in the metal version and retest those. This is an example graph from some data we collected using the rule 1,000 gallons per hour, which is the specific motor. The worst set of data here, the lowest down, the one that created the least amount of force was a 38 millimeter prop, which had two blades. And then the other two were the 47 millimeter both, and one had two blades and one had three. And as you can see by the graph, the three-bladed one um, produce a little bit more force at the same voltages. Where we are headed. We plan to continue work throughout the school year and important dates for us are, um, are to have environmental sensors integrated with the circuitry of the robot by the end of December of this year, to have our float and tether designed and finalized by the end of February of 2014, and to have a completed ROV ready for sale by May 2014. Thank you. This is a link to our blog. Feel free to check it out if you wish to, for further explanation on anything we've done or to get updates on our progress.